Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Bonjour tout le monde! Salut hey, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello everyone, I started that off in uh, Francais, ho ho ho, oui oui oui, tabernak. <laughs> this is Big Fat Real Estate Checks, I don't think I've ever done that yet, no, I don't know why, because that's so much fun. Uh, this is Margot Kozlowski. Frank, Frank, did you this get is... any of it? <laughs> yeah, oh, wish... tabernak, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one you got. Yeah. <laughs> Bonjour, yes. <laughs> Je m'appelle Francesco. So, this is Big Fat Real Estate Checks. My name is Marco Kozlowski. This is Francesco Galuccio next to me, still in Florida. We can't get rid of him. He's kind of like herpes. And then we have <laughs> Gabriel Araish, who will be joining us uh, in the next couple of weeks in Florida. So, I'm looking forward to uh, you, me, and uh, you, my Dupree. friend, uh, all being together uh, and uh, frolicking together, uh, holding hands and singing Kumbaya, um, or not. So, uh, today we're going to be, uh, to, oh, before I forget, if you have not listened to the first 10 episodes or prior episodes, uh, please do. Uh, there's a lot of great content on here, free content that we want to give to give. We want to make sure that you have all the greatest knowledge and apply this knowledge, of course. And of course, if you ever want help uh, buying some assets, I think we know some people that can help you do that if you so desire in the future. And uh, yeah, so please listen to the first top 10 at least, the number, um, not the top 10, but the, the first 10, I should say. Uh, and yeah, and I, I just looked at some stats and we're the, the top uh, 1,700 of 1. 1.6 million podcasts. So we're like in the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.001% of uh, podcasts, which is really exciting. And it's because of you, the listener. And uh, of course, like it, love it, share it, comment, and give us some great feedback, please. And uh, we have over a thousand star, five star reviews, which is very exciting. And um, we're going for 10,000 now. So let's, 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 let's make it happen together. And I appreciate your help and support throughout that journey. And we love you very much as a listener. And thank you for um, all the great comments and feedback. We really do appreciate you. So today we're going to be discussing uh, outlying areas. And when you first start, um, we had a pre-discussion um, before shooting this podcast on the ascension of uh, of what people do uh, and we might have different philosophies on this some believe that you should go into a more populated area first uh, definitely not necessarily just where you live I know there's some 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 folks that's you know suggest that you only buy properties where you live I don't agree with that necessarily unless you live in an area that has a higher return because I believe buying something with a higher return is better than something that's local because you're supposed to get property management anyway and you're supposed to be hands off and if you're hands off across the street, if it's across the state or across the country, it shouldn't matter. Or across, you know, in another country like you yeah, guys. You know, like we do. Um, so, exactly. So, or, you know, many of my my followers do as well. So, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting conversation because when you first start, uh, it's like fishing, you wanna catch any fish. Right. I just want to catch a fish. I want to catch a fish. I want to catch a fish. You don't care. You don't give a shit what kind of fish it is. You just want to catch fish. Then when you start catching any fish, you get good at catching anything. Then you want to start catching a really big fish. All right. So I'm tired of dealing these small little things. I want to catch a big one. I want to do 100 unit in one one go, 150, take down a 200 unit hotel, whatever it is. I want to do something big. Right. That's usually the ascension. And once you do a few of those, then you're tired of doing the big ones because, you know, you can do that. Then you go into the hardest fish to catch, like the, the blue marlin or, you know, the whatever the you know the, the the most elusive fish there is i don't fish enough to know what that fish is but um i should have done the research before starting the podcast <laughs> that's how prepared i am and i'm sure we're gonna get some comments saying marco the hardest fish to catch is a squirrel uh whatever <laughs> so it's <clears throat> squirrel, and, squirrel squid? a squirrel fish a swimming yeah. squirrel, squirrel i would fish. love to see that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a squirrel fish there's only a few of them i actually the had a squirrel when i was growing up <laughs> and a, a baby squirrel and my grandmother let it outside and it drowned in her swimming pool and i will never forget it it made me very sad very, very sorry. All right, that's uh, wow. interesting to know. You know that I don't that's have ADHD it. or anything, right? Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter. Anywho, squirrel. squirrel. So Thursday. So it's a... Uh, sailfish. Yeah. So, so is, oh, you just sailfish. Googled it? Is I it did. sailfish? Oh, that's right. what it said. So I don't know how to write hardest. that is. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, Marlins are selfish. I think me, me, um, I'm going to get letters now. Marlins oh, and selfish, not the same thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, lucky okay. for you, this isn't a fishing show, so we're good. It's yes. not what we're claiming is our expertise. <laughs> <laughs> However, that's a disclaimer. There's always there, <laughs> we don't know our fish. We just we eat don't. This thing. We just yeah. I like to eat fish. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Unless it smells like fish, and in which case that's <laughs> there's a lot of things I won't put in my mouth that smell like fish. But that's another topic. For <laughs> another <laughs> that is definitely another topic. Okay. Frank after dark. <laughs> oh. Um, Oh, yes. my goodness. Uh, you'll be my first guest. Uh, okay. So, what? For Freak what? after dark. Okay. All right. I thought you meant something else. I'm like, no. uh-oh. You guys are getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> See how much fun we have doing oh, a podcast. Boy. is so much fun. Okay. So, yes. So, you want to catch first the uh, any fish to the biggest fish to the hardest uh, fish to catch. And uh, my belief is... Um, and you guys might believe differently, but this is the ascension that you, all three of us had actually. My first property was just any property. Uh, and then I wanted to get a little bit more specific. And now I'm, I'm, I look for the hardest possible deals that are super complicated that no one would ever want to do. And those turn me on because I really like using my mind to turn complete shit into, you know, chicken shit into chicken salad, basically. So, um, really enjoy that. So, um, I know, um, I'll start with Gabe because I know Gabe, you're, you're about to exit on a, uh, a property that is kind of an outlier. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, I think it was one of your first, I'd say top three properties yep. that you purchased. Yeah. Top five, top two, top. Well, the first, first, for the first purchase was five separate houses. So in theory, it's the sixth, but yeah, it was the second deal. Okay. I, yeah. So the sixth, after. the sixth deal, but yeah. it's still. Yeah, number number of units six. So it's your six deal technically, ish, uh, or top two depending on how you look at it. But whatever. Uh, and early so on, this is in the middle of Indiana. Like yeah. not you know not Indianapolis. Um, no, no, this it's is not like, a big city. Yeah, it's an this is like uh, what like 50, 50, 60, 70 miles away from anywhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember going to take a look at this property when you first got it, and I got a speeding ticket uh, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> And the owner <laughs> that's of the, not different. That's and the not owner new. of the property texted me saying you got a speeding ticket because he oh. was checking. Yeah, that, I don't know if you remember how weird that owner was. John, where he oh, wouldn't. Yeah. He, it's not that he was weird. He was. He. Well, I guess you can consider him weird. I never met him, but this guy's so knowledgeable. It's unreal. He knows everything about everything, and we. Yeah. You know, we we start. We kept in contact. I don't know if you know this, but I can tell because you still know his name, and I'm like yeah. the owner, and you're yeah. just like John, like yeah. my best bud ever. Nah, we just went on a fishing bud, trip together for sailfish. He's bailed us out a lot. Yeah, he's he's been good. Good, yeah, because he was at when we were first negotiating with the guy. Uh, he because th th so let's just rewind a little bit. So yeah. this is uh, Gabe's deal, and this is a mobile home park uh, in the middle of Indiana somewhere, and. One of the first properties that you bought, you got in with no money out of your pocket, if I remember. Mm -hmm. You used, you know, processed as I as I explain it. And uh, there was a manager that was there for a while, and then we, you bought it, and then during the due diligence period, I remember at closing, they wouldn't, he wouldn't accept a wire transfer. Remember that? Where like I don't remember the, the wire transfer. The I remember the titles. The titles he needed to have he, everything he done would, by hand. He, he wanted. He wouldn't. He didn't want to release the titles because he didn't trust wire transfers. Correct. He had to go get a check and Maybe pick it up. Old school, right? When oh they yeah. Old school. They don't understand that. What do you mean you're uh, wiring money? No, no, he, 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 he needs something back. tangible in their hand. But he can he, because you can pull back the wire transfer. He says I've seen wire transfers. Reverse being pulled back, you uh, know, three months after, and I'm like, those are ACHs, maybe. Yeah, but, but not that's wires. not a wire transfer. Oh, whatever. ACHs, he, yes, he, whatever. He needed yeah. a check. He went to the title company, drove there, and picked up a check. That's and he then he gave the titles. It. Yeah, it was it was weird. It was really weird. But anyway, that's 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 just a recollection of. And when I got a speeding ticket uh, on my way back from DD, he literally texted me the next day saying, "Why did you get a speeding ticket? What's wrong with you?" <laughs> What, because he knew the sheriff that gave you the ticket? I, he looks online every day to see oh. what's going on because there's nothing happening. Like, there's nothing happening <laughs> in that town. That's entertainment? I think, right. I think like, he's that's also... That's why he knows everything about anything because he, he's looks, also an he just ex, reads. Isn't he an ex-army or vet or something like that? I, he's, I, he's, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of ex-army vets that are on the street, you know, looking for cash. And, I, and, yeah. and I'm not, you know, there's there's there, there are people that are affected different ways. And sure. by the way, if you haven't seen, um, you know, the problem with John Stewart, the very first episode talks about vets. It's a plug for the show because it's it's terrible how vets are treated in this country uh, in the U.S. It's really really sad, and uh, I highly recommend the show if you 
don't know what the hell I'm talking about, and you really do care about uh, those that serve, uh, you really should watch The Problem with Jon Stewart, episode one on Apple TV. Very, very good show. So, um, yeah, I just want to say that that it's important. So, uh, we're going in all sorts of directions today. But, um, yeah, so Gabe, give us uh, the rundown here. Um, just get whatever information you want to share uh, or issues, problems, because you're about to exit. And the yes. question really is, is if you're making money on a property, why are you exiting, number one? Uh, and number two is what have been the problems, if any, on this park? So others can yeah. learn from that. And yeah, let's just share and be open and not well, we'll start with We'll start with the problems. Um, so going into this property, it, it was remote, but we, we had a manager in place. Uh, like I said, the, the previous owner, John, was very hands-on, but he had he, he kind of knew everybody in the town and he appointed a manager, said, you know, this person's really good and, and you know, she's gonna keep it straight and I'll keep an eye on her. It was like, he was very clear and and it's probably not how I would get into a property today uh, on that on that end. But, uh, you know, we got in, she was great. Uh, you know, uh, she, she did what she had to do until maybe a year and a half into into the property. And this thing was cash flowing from the get go. We the, the markets were under rent, so we were able to increase rent, you know, every time someone left. And then all of a sudden for like about a month, there was no more interaction with the property manager. And now it's, okay, what's going on? No answer, no no answer. So we, we, we work with WhatsApp, you know, groups and whatnot, nothing, messages, phone calls. She's not, she's not answering. And so finally we said, you know what, let's call, let's call John. Let's call the, the, the owner, he knows everything. He, he still, you know, he, he, he knows about Marco's speeding ticket. So he must know what's going on with, with this, this property manager. So we call him. And he picks up the phone and say, you're calling about this girl, you know, lady, you know, I'm just, she's going to remain nameless for now. So, <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we can't reach her. He's like, yeah, well, she's uh, this and that. She's basically become some sort of drug addict and is on a sex bender. Oh. And, and yeah, so Jeez. basically get rid of her. And we're like, okay, great. Hold but, on, this is the one that he recommended to you. Yeah, which, and she was doing fabulous. So th there's some event that happened in, in, oh. in the, I guess the last two months before she disappeared that put her on a different track. So I don't know if it's, you know, she separated from her husband or whatnot. The point is, is he knew exactly what's going on again and and said, give me a day or two and I'll get back to you. And then he found this new property manager, which we still have today. And she's, again, been great, super helpful. Uh, and, uh, and, and so it's been going well. She's actually brought in, uh, you know, there's a, Look, I mean, we, we lost a tenant two days ago and we're closing today, right? And and there's already a tenant that's ready to sign today. She's on the ball. She knows what she's doing, always increases rent. So she's brought up our revenue significantly. And, and, and as we're exiting now at a, at a, you know, I think more than twice what we paid, uh, it's it's in part due to what she's done. So the, the property management on that side is, has been very good. So, uh, but it's not been uh, without its problems. So there's, you know, we have somebody working there, uh, the, the, I guess the maintenance guy that's, he's, uh, he needs to be uh, kept, like we need to keep an eye on him. Basically every time he sends bills, you know, you gotta look like, hey buddy, you know, it took you like 12 hours to paint a place that doesn't make any sense. And then you gotta work your way back. So that's yeah. keeping an eye on the thing. I mean, if I were painting, I think 12 hours makes sense. But for someone who, who, who who's you know is supposedly a maintenance person that that should be like a two hour job or three hour job so we 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 had to keep an eye on him and we and we know this and there's not that many maintenance people out there and that's kind of the remote aspect that we were talking about earlier is has it been good yeah we've been cash flowing like crazy for the last whatever three years or four years that we own this uh you know so making money is it, it's there as long as we have the right controls and you know we're on top of things uh, so it's been good. Now, why the exit with all this? So, before you get there, I, I, I yeah. just I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, it's okay. Now, you 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 seem to be a lot more hands on than you should be because it's remote. Yes, a little bit more. Like with, uh, just like with you and and Linda and the park that you exited out of, she was Linda. Your wife was there constantly just communicating because of very difficult to find humans that can do a good job in remote areas if you want something done nobody like there's no people that can go get it done it's 
too remote. You you got slim pickings, that's, that's for sure. Right. In in a smaller town, you're you're you know you got maybe less than a handful of of, of tradesmen or people that paint or carpenter or whatever it is. And the managers, yeah, thankfully for, for you, in, in your case, you got a great manager. We had a yeah. manager that's been on there, but they were so laxed from the previous owner, they weren't doing anything. So we had to, like anything that we needed maintenance, she was old anyways. Um, but she still rolled up her sleeves, but not as quickly as we wanted to. Sure. And so we, we just severed that. We got a maintenance manager thinking that would be better. But again, in a small town, uh, you're gonna get some uh, riff rafters in there. And you know, I know we, we you know, we were, rehabbing some units and we purchased material and all those all that material didn't go into our unit he was doing side jobs in the town right mm -hmm. so we were kind of handcuffed a little bit but anyways so with all those yeah. problems this is i just want to before you finish your story and i hope i don't break your train of thought um, no not at all with all those problems where you know we're having to do this and you have to do this and you got to look at the bill and you have to oh my gosh we have this problem the person you know went on a drug and alcohol bender and is in prison or whatever, you know, murdered somebody else. What, whatever the thing is going on in that local area, like sounds, oh my gosh, it sounds terrible. I would never want to do it. Do you regret buying it? Not at all. Like I said, we, we've been making well over, I don't know, was it 50 to 60, 50, 55,000 NOI every year. On uh, how much money of your own? Nothing. No money. Right. So once again, 55,000 net income. Call it 50, with, even just to, yeah, to make it. Let's yeah. call it, let's call yeah. it 40. Yeah, I don't give okay, a shit. even better. Let's yeah. call it forty. Let's yeah. call it thirty. Who cares? All right, thirty grand. All right, in your pocket, whatever. For for the, is it better to make thirty grand and have to look at a couple of bills and deal with a couple of problems, or is it better to go to work every single day and have all your time sucked in by somebody else? So I just want to keep this into perspective, because we have a lot of horror stories, a lot of them, and it doesn't stop us from doing the business because it's better than selling tires. It's got you know not, if you're a tire salesman you know god bless you um it's just i prefer to deal with a few problems every single day and have millions coming in than deal with no problems and sell tires that's just that's just my choice so if you're not seeing this perspective properly be careful because i don't want you to think we're telling you these things to scare you away from the business that's not true we're just letting you know what could happen in remote areas and I think it's good for you to do it because you learned so much, Gabriel and Frank, from those experiences. A one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And you know what? Uh, thankfully, like in Gabe's situation, we, we we were cash flowing. It wasn't it wasn't that we weren't making money, uh, and we did sold it for you know a good profit. Actually, one year, you sold one year in November. We sold it because you were partnered did, on that. With I us. was. And uh, did you? Double your money, triple your money, or the, the because you didn't have any money into it anyway. No, but it, it was it was more than double. It was around what? You both doubled. You, you both, both bought doubled. it and sold it for twice what you yeah. bought it for. Yeah. Ish. Yes. Yes. And we were making about eighty-ish uh, gross uh, yeah, on that one. So but forty net. Yeah. So around there. Yeah. That was our, our our expense ratio on that. But like I said, we learned. Well, again, I, I know Linda, my wife. She's more. She was more engaged with the managers. Pretty much every day there was a shit show. Something happened. Whatever. How much did she learn? Uh, she learned a lot. Uh, a big time where where basically where, where you open up the podcast is like okay you're buying anything it was in the outskirts it was about 30 minutes away from uh, a major metropolitan uh, for, for those of you who know florida it's near it was near tallahassee but it was still 30 35 minutes out uh tallahassee is the capital of florida up in uh, in the north in the panhandle there and but to get tradesmen even to get i know we had a water issue before and you don't want to have water issues um you know the, the meter keeps spinning and that means money coming out we had to get rotor router from uh tallahassee so the first hour and a bit was travel we still have to pay them 150 bucks an hour so you came with those challenges we know a little bit better we put mechanisms in place now <clears throat> where the manager has to check the water meter every day to make sure that thing's not just spinning right uh rapidly because water can kill you but if you can survive in that environment you're going to make a killing in a better environment so oh, 100 you want to cut your teeth into the jungle so when it's not the jungle you can just do extremely well because everyone's soft yeah so uh, that's why i recommend on your first deal to th just be thrown into the deep end like you have been gabe and frank and yeah it's going to be a, a very high profit margin but there's a price to pay with that because of the remoteness and those are lessons that will harden you these are life lessons it's like being at home and being soft and getting a blue ribbon your whole life saying you know your second you know you participated good That's job right. Participation and then you go into ribbons. the real world and you're crushed because 
They don't do participation nothing, ribbons. That, that's <laughs> oh. not how it works in life, right? So, you know, that's that's there why isn't. there isn't. That's why I kicked my kids out. You know, when they were you know. But 30, we, I think, our process has got better with it as well, right? Yes, I mean, one hundred percent. So, like the way we we select property managers has changed. You know, how many property managers we're looking for has changed. Like a few things have changed, and we've made them better. And but yes, and and again, it, it sounds like you were a lot more involved than I was, frankly, with your, your with your park. But for us. You know, we, we, we put in controls and we made sure that they were followed every month. That's it. And and when they weren't followed, then we followed up and made sure that, you know, understood why. So, but the bottom line is, with all that said, the the, the main reason is, so our our property manager is, she's getting up there in age, I think, and she, she, she got sick and she basically said, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to stop. And rather than us going through a whole other process of finding another property manager and, uh, you know, taking a risk on someone else, because at this point, that's what it is. Uh, you, you know, we have someone that's great and we've had someone before that's that's basically, uh, you know, ended up MIA. So we we didn't want to go through that again. And, you know, we have partners in this. So the discussion was, you know, let's just put this up for sale. The market is good. And then we let the buyers uh, either become op, you know, operators or they can find someone to, to run it if they want. And so that's kind of the decision was made that it's the right time to exit. But there's a bunch of other factors. I mean, we have other properties, bigger properties. We're still looking for bigger properties. You know, we have the, the, the private equity fund going on. There's a few things where I, I now want to kind of stay on the, on. it's it's a smallish property, right? It's like 20, one 22 units so it's on the smaller side and so divesting from something smaller that requires some time to end up in something probably much bigger and probably spending less time is is more along the lines of where i'm uh, or my goals are now so all that kind of it just it all worked out right in terms of the timing so selling was good we found a buyer we found actually a couple of buyers <laughs> we went through a couple of them and, and finally now we're closing with these buyers who are from actually from the area so uh they're a little bit out i think they're from indianapolis and uh they're gonna have to deal with another property manager and but that's gonna be on them and you know we'll just take our profits take our cash flow that we've taken over the last four years and 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 move on to the next the next one yeah put another lure on your uh fishing hook there better yeah. lure with more now you have you know if you bought it for what 250 uh yeah it was uh, it's just uh, yeah about about that 280 something like that we just just under double yeah yeah, yeah. we're selling for close to 500 so 100, yeah. 500 thousand yeah. 495 yeah so it's uh it's pretty much you know quarter million dollar profit which That's is good kind of, congrats that's bad. Man. yeah Very good. really good it's, there are worse ways to make a quarter million dollars in how many years three years yeah, three four? or four years. Yeah, I remember it's been 2017, four, maybe. Maybe 2017. Yeah, it could five? be. Yeah, four. Wow. I think it's 2017. I'm, yeah, it's been a while. Maybe 18. It's still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, pretty that's good. a. It's what 60, 60 thousand a year, ish. Yeah, in profits, yeah, doing nothing, just flow. sitting there. That's called that's called inflation, my friend. I think we yes. did a podcast on this. Yeah, we did. If you haven't listened to it, it's a great one. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. a good podcast. It is a good podcast. Uh, so there you go. So I, I think there are more. There's more to say about this management issue. I think we should do another podcast on uh, sure. remoteness and management. Um, but let's if we can wrap this up into remote area uh, versus uh, non-remote area. Um, what's your recommendation, Gabe? If you had to do it all over again, would you do it? And what's your word of advice for someone that's just starting? So yeah, starting off, it's something that I would definitely do again. Uh, but from the get go. You know, I think when I got into the business, I thought more passive than active. And I expected this thing to kind of run on itself. And and then I realized that there was some issues like the property management that come up and the maintenance and whatnot. So I've had to adapt and create, like I said, processes and controls for, for my property to be able to survive and make this thrive. I think if I'd started over again, yes, 100%, I, would, I, I wouldn't be scared of going into remote location, but definitely with a, a clearer mind that this is gonna require some work uh, and which I'm not afraid of. It's just, that's not my, ex that wasn't my expectation coming in, you know? Uh, would I do that again now? Probably not because of, you know, 
I have options now. I have more choice. I'm just I'm not just looking for any property. I'm looking for specific properties, specific types. But if I have to start all over again, it's the same it, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, you just want to fish, you want you want income. At that point, you know, I still had a job, all that. So if I'm going back there, yeah, anything that's going to add income to my uh, bottom line is I'm I'm definitely taking a look at it and if I got to do a little bit of extra work, hell, I I think I must have put in all maybe even if it were two hours of work a month, I was still making on the cash flow alone more, you know, more per hour than I was making on my job. So it's, it's, if anything, I should have just left my job to do more of this. Well, I, I just want to underline that you were hardened and learned a lot through that process. 100%. And that journey is more important than the money, in my opinion, because if you don't learn those lessons, the only reason we're good at what we're doing is because we know how to handle conflict and problems. And if yep, you're really good at handling it. problems and conflict, you can do anything. And why is, you know, so why, why is a brain surgeon that takes bullets out of brains, you know, paid $3 million a year or four? Because Precision. they handle problems, <laughs> B- big problems yeah. that are very delicate to handle. And the, the more skilled you are at handling these problems, the more money you're going to make, period. And you need to, and if you can make 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 a year, being paid to deal with these problems you're 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 ahead of the game and you're it's you're working for yourself you're not working for somebody else dealing with these problems frank yeah absolutely no i i i share the same thoughts as as gabe uh, i think when you get started you're you're anxious because you have you know a, a why a reason why you got into this in the first place and you know uh, gabe had the expectation of you know the residual income and the passive income same here uh so you you you, you know you, you're fishing with a net basically and you're just grabbing what you can uh, because of that anticipation because that um y- you want I-, I wanted to get out of my my government job that was that was th- that was my goal that was my only thing is replace my government jobs so any property would have done i didn't foresee obviously i was not really experienced i had you <laughs> there you know to, to to lean my uh you yeah, know to, to lean on here. your shoulders for so i kind of felt a little bit safe because you were there in case shit happened and shit did happen uh but you you made me realize and even my wife linda that listen yes shit's gonna happen and, and you always say murphy does exist shit's it's gonna happen partner. yeah and it, it's it's how you handle it and how you overcome it and how you turn that that issue or that problem or whatever you want to call it, that obstacle into uh an, an opportunity, opportunity. Mm-hmm. and that's the way you look at it and that's the way i look at a lot of things now is okay there's a problem here it's gonna happen how do i change that into an opportunity uh, without being, you know, fear to to move or whatever. So it was scary at first. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there was a lot of issues there, uh, but I, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I think that made me stronger, made me wiser uh, for the next one and, and the next one after that. Would you recommend someone starting in a remote area or something close to them or anything that with cash flow or what? What's your recommendation? For me, is anything with cash flow is get to your first it, one. It, it first one. It's just, you don't want to catch and release when. If you're wise big and you want to get out of something, you want to get out of your job, you want to get out of the daily grunt, and you catch something that's, oh shit, you know what? Okay, in your case, Gabe, it replaced, it would have actually replaced your income to deal with that. So, you know, some people say, you know what? I'll deal with the shit for now uh, to, to get out of my job or to get out of that situation that I need to do. So, I, uh, yeah, I would, I just, would pick anything right now. Just to highlight that, yeah, that didn't, that, that wouldn't have replaced my income on its own. But had I kept doing that, it, it could have easily replaced my income. But I do want to highlight that. You know, we got. I got into this property. I say we because I have I have partners in this. It, we got into this property knowing that we had a mentor. We had Marco there that was at the time going to. You know, we had faith that if something went wrong, we had someone to with experience that we can ask for advice. We wouldn't ask them to do anything. Just you know, it, it's more like a brainstorming session of you know, do you see a solution here when I don't see one? And just that alone is, I think gave us the confidence of going into uh you know or more confidence going into a remote area because we knew that we we had kind of a safety net of of problem solving so 100 percent, i would do it again uh, but i think you know the caveat is that ha- having you there mark at the time did did add some uh, additional confidence into the process remote i wouldn't even bought it in the u.s if yeah I didn't oh, have someone like marco so never mind a remote i wouldn't yeah. even bought it out of my backyard <laughs> you know yeah you're you're, you're a little I think bit the other end of town is already too far for me in toronto but uh yeah having that comfort sure. having someone uh cover your back in case shit happens is is definitely help yeah like in anything you don't want to learn how to fly a plane without having a pilot next to you telling you what to mm-hmm. do it, you know that's suicide 
literally, or and you're gonna crash someone's plane unless you bought your plane and decided to take it for a spin. <laughs> splat. Yep. Splat. 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 Well, I think that was pretty good. Yep. Um, hopefully the listener agrees because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Or maybe not. Maybe we just have sh- fun and distribute these things and we don't give a shit what people think but we do (laughs) a little bit you know we really do care about your opinion and please like it love it share it uh appreciate you too and uh, i think the next one we'll we'll talk about remote um you know management or something in that in that realm because i think we can go on for hours about that so um again listener thank you so much gabe frank thank you so much appreciate you both look forward to uh the next episode and uh, again guys if this is something that you find extremely valuable uh please don't be afraid to uh, share it with your uh, your community and post on social if you can and uh we look forward to uh seeing you being successful in your very own opportunities using none of your own money using skills instead of cash to be able to explode your wealth and use inflation to make you wealthy Thanks, guys. Have a great day. If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for a life starts by finding deals, and it's easier than you think. Simply go to GetDealsByTuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, this course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to GetDealsByTuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.